Well, good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. I'm Alex Howerton from Grand Rapids, Michigan, and I am the president of the Space Dock Surfers, uh, an investment club that is trying to invest, when I'm trying to actually investing in space-related companies and companies that have any type of uh, technology or application which would be valuable in opening the space frontier. To kick it all off, we'll start with the shameless plug portion of the uh, presentation. These are my two books. This is what, one of the reasons I'm here. This is uh, Free Space, Real Alternatives for Reaching Outer Space. I wrote it in 1995. Several of the I, I wrote it about several companies, small startup companies, which are uh, working hard to open up the space frontier. Several of them are still going strong. Uh, the Artemis Society is in here. They were uh, at the table next to me over there. Uh, I'll pass that around. You can move that. That's a nonfiction, but it's also got a, a, a section on the philosophy of why to go to space at all. And then I talked to uh, Robert Ford. Who knows Robert Ford by work or by reputation? He, uh, I actually uh, got to know him a little bit when I was living out in the Pacific Northwest. And he said to me, uh, Alex, I make ten times on my, I make ten times what I make on my science fiction as I do for my science fact. So I took a little cue from that and I wrote a novel, which just came out. This is actually the official release weekend of this. Uh, Project Avalon, it's basically a manifesto of how to go to develop the moon, disguised as a novel, with a lot of philosophy, a lot of fact, a lot of good stuff in here, but I tried to make it palatable for the general public because I really want to uh, try to, uh, you know, this, is, this, this weekend is great, but frankly, it's preaching to the choir. I'm trying to spin it out to a greater audience. And, you know, Deep Impact, things like Deep Impact, you can think of whatever you want of them, but they are doing the same type of thing. So I'll pass those around, you can take a look at them, and I'm gonna be doing a book signing over in front of the exhibition hall after all this. Okay, enough of that. Um, the reason I wrote those books and got involved with the Space Stock Surfers is because uh, <clears throat> I am firmly convinced that the only way space is ever going to be truly and sustainably developed is through private economic means motivated by profit. Uh, you know, government programs, everything that's been talked about here, wonderful stuff, but it's not gonna stick until average people feel there's a reason to stay here. All these things, you know, Rick Tomlinson and the Space Frontier Foundation and uh, Jim Benson and everyone, wonderful. I support them all, I love them all, we need them all, but it all comes down to this, and some of these people here miss this point entirely. If you cannot uh, come up with something that eventually comes down into some type of computer product or service, none of this stuff matters. Uh, if that's the government, fine, but the government you know, has its own agenda going on, but selling launch services or selling business to business, all that, eventually down the line somewhere, it results in a product or service which has to be offered to the general public, which they're willing to put out there. And I was talking to one gentleman here today uh, Coca-Cola is a multi-billion dollar corporation by selling one can of Coke at a time, right? And they would love to slap their logo on the side of a rocket if they were convinced that that would help them sell one can of Coke at a time. So that's what it comes down to, and ultimately that's what we're really all after, isn't it? Uh, uh, being able to consume space products, and you know the spin-off list from NASA is just huge, of course. Um, uh, space tourism, being able to consume this, this, this uh, product of space travel ourselves, isn't that what we're all really after, ultimately? So that's what we've done in Grand Rapids, Michigan. There's 10 of us, the Space Stock Surfers. I wanted to go for a nice, stodgy Space Stock Society, but a buddy of mine said, no, man, you gotta go for something wild that'll catch their imagination. So that's how we ended up with Space Stock Surfers. We go out, surf the web, looking for the good stuff, and once we find it, we're gonna get nice and positioned, and then when this all takes off, and everybody figures it out, and all these stocks take off, we're gonna be surfing that curl right on the edge of the wave, getting as rich as we can. So, Surf's up, dude. That's right. Yeah. So that's what we're doing. Um, there's 10 of us. Uh, uh, I put out a, I blasted out a message to the general space nut community in Grand Rapids and got a few people that way, and then I strong-armed a few of my friends into it too. So we've got a balance between the, the true space enthusiasts and the people who just want to make good old-fashioned money, which is a nice balance because what it's done is uh, some of the people that aren't necessarily, you know, have the vision and the calling like we do, um, they're proposing healthcare companies and uh, uh, 
financial services companies. So we get a nice diversification in that. And it's a really good mix and it's working out well. Um, why? Why this? Why do anything like this? Well, this is why, right here. This is a quote from E.F. Schumacher's 1973 book, Small is Beautiful. What is it that we really require from the scientists and technologists? I should answer, we need methods and equipment which are, one, cheap enough so that they are accessible to virtually everyone, two, suitable for small scale application, and three, compatible with man's need for creativity. All these wonderful, huge, big space programs, Apollo in particular, wonderful stuff. I don't want to detract a bit from what went on there, but it was, it did not fulfill that, and so therefore we could not sustain it. Can anyone think of something that does fulfill that and therefore is booming out of, almost out of control? Yeah, about communications. TV. Well, how Hello. about the web? How about computers? Wow. How about the internet? TV came first. Yeah, well, TV and that, well, it's all blending. You know, the, the computers and t uh, telecommunications is all converging right now. Uh, you know, cable modems and all that stuff. So exactly that. Anyone can go out and buy a computer and throw up a website. I did it. I taught my health website in uh, two months. And, and I've got a commercial website out there. Uh, I can accept secure credit card transactions. I didn't know a thing about what, well, I mean, I didn't care. I'm a computer trainer by nature, but I didn't know HTML, uh, hypertext uh, meta language coding, before two months ago. And I just went in there and I just, I just did it. How many of you can build a rocket in your backyard in two months? You know. So that's where we got to get in the space movement to really have this thing take off. And that's what we're trying to do. Uh, I and my colleagues in the space surfers are actively, materially participating in space development. We own the companies that are doing it. We are making money, even as we speak, on these companies. I am financing space development. That's what we're all about. And that's what I uh, would like to see happen more and more around the country and around the world. Here's our portfolio. This is what we're investing in. Come here. We got these. Uh, and he sticks sheets there, oh, John. Beautiful. Okay, there's our portfolio. Uh, there we go. How about that? There we go. That's much better. There, you can see everything now. There are, um, as of recently, we have 14 stocks. Uh, everything from big old solid as rock blue chips right down to pie in the sky, dark horse, baby needs a new pair of booties type stocks. We've got space stocks, we've got launch stocks, we've got this, we've got that and the other. I'll turn it sideways after a while. What I want to show you here is these are our relative uh, levels of investment. Every one of them, there's one here, there it is, that one's down, this one's flat, every other one is up. Every one. Nothing's tanked. We haven't had to sell off anything because it wasn't any good. We are uh, organized under the ideas and principles of the National Association of Investors Corporation. You know, very sound ladies, who's heard of them? That's who we're organized like, but we're taking off and then doing our own thing. So we evaluate the stocks and we, you know, look at the fundamentals, get the annual reports, surf out and get the latest quarterly numbers and then subject it to the stock selection guide analysis and get our numbers and argue it out and make our decisions. What do we got here? Let me turn it so we can read all of these. Uh, Allied Signal, well, you know, big old blue chip. Let's see, the big blue chips, Allied Signal, um, um, Lockheed Martin, Loral, been reading about Loral lately? Yeah. Yeah, quite a lot going on with Loral and Bernard Schwartz going, why are you guys mad at me? <laughs> I was just reading that at breakfast this morning. For being a Democrat, of course. That's right. Uh, Motorola uh, and the T. Rowe Price, that's a totally financial services. It has nothing to do with space. That's uh, all for the idea of diversification. Uh, uh, we're in, with a lot of these, we're in what are called DRIPS, or Dividend Reinvestment Programs, wherein you tap into a company and send them, you know, 50 bucks every month or two months, and they invest it right into their stock. You avoid broker costs, and it's dollar cost averaging, meaning you're putting a steady amount in there, and it gives you, you know, ultimately a, a finer degree of percentage of increase. Uh, then, well, there's some diversification plays, Century Telephone, Telecommunications, Electronic Arts, makes computer games, 
uh, well, Intel, there's Intel, you know, they basically, Intel and Microsoft, the Wintel uh, duopoly, they uh, are basically sustaining the uh, NASDAQ market all by themselves. Um, Invacare, healthcare, uh, what else? Uh, FICOR, healthcare. And then we got our, you know, labors of love, our dark horses, our leaps of faith. We've got, uh, well, orbital sciences. They were going like this for the longest time, and then they did this thing, and we said, okay, it's time, we got in them. They've doubled in six months since we got in them, so we're all happy with that. Space development, who's heard Jim Benson here? We're gonna back up the truck on those guys. That's just like a total long shot, but I mean, that's what we're formed to do. Even if he tanks out, that's where we wanna go out there and take the stand, yes, uh, this is what we wanna do. Uh, Light Path, that's a wonderful company. I'd love to just talk about that for half an hour, but. Uh, Basically, it's this woman, Leslie Donziger, she's down in, uh, in uh, Arizona, and she's an enviro nut, and she wanted to you know, save the planet like the rest of us. So her angle was solar power, and so she went out into the desert and started developing solar power, and then she realized, well, the problem is uh, the sun's moving and then cloudy days and all that. So then she went so far as to develop a lens which can bring the light in from any direction and then focus it on a single spot. Sorry? Uh, well, she calls it Gradium. She's got a patent and everything. It's called Gradium. And so she uh, went to investors and went to scientists and said, look, I got this lens. And the scientists said, uh, excuse me, uh, you can't do that. She goes, but I did it. And she's, they said, no, no, you can't do that. She says, but I did it. So she's got this you know, institutional mindset to fight against. But she's got, she's got investors, and they do not have a positive cash flow yet. But this is another, like, you go, girl, type uh, uh, purchase thing. Um, Motorola, we're waiting for Iridium to come online, and I just read that Motorola allied their Celestri system with Teledesic, so that makes both Motorola and Teledesic more viable and credible. Um, what else is good in there? Lockheed Martin, I mean, you know, it's a big BMF, but hey, you know, returning on investment. Um, uh, integral systems, that's one of my favorites. They, they are a, they've developed off the shelf ground station tracking and control software for satellites. Just like uh, if you've heard of, uh, oh, not public, forget them. Anyway, they're, they're trying <laughs> to standardize uh, 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 satellite operations, basically. And they are undiscovered, but they have a great balance sheet and great earnings uh, uh, trend, so we jumped all over them. Analytical graphics is that? Analytical graphics, graphics is the other one. They're trying to get into uh, commercial off the shelf, is what they call it, COTS, commercial off the shelf. Uh, that's what um, Integral Systems is trying to do for satellite ground stations. So that's our portfolio, 14 stocks, and we're looking at new stuff all the time. I think I'm a little graphics is coming in our bill this semester. Fantastic. We'll look, we'll look up all over that. If they, uh, well, if they get the numbers. You know, that, that's what it comes down to. You can be, you can love this stuff, but it still comes down to the numbers. I, I've said this to a few people, and I, I want to say this to everyone. The money will go, this, this is just a dead flat axiom, the immutable axiom of investment. The money will go to the best risk adjusted rate of return, whether that's tennis shoes, frozen yogurt outlets, or lunar, lunar Disneyland, whatever it is. So the onus of proof, the burden of proof, falls on us to prove to them in Wall Street and them on Main Street, which are eventually gonna buy the products, that this is the best way to spend and invest your money. The, the people that love this stuff are here this weekend. If we're gonna convince anybody else that's not at this convention, we gotta follow that rule. And especially if you heard Jim Benson talk about approaching the uh, uh, venture capitalists there on Wall Street, that's all they care about. <coughs> yeah, 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 whatever. What's my internal rate of return? They'll, they'll shut you up and say that, you know. And if you can't answer that question, see ya next. You know that's how it goes. That's the that's the that's the cold hard reality of it. There. So that's that's one of the. Oh, I don't anything up there, do I? That's what uh, we're trying to do is uh, take out the quote unquote giggle factor out of all this and make it respectable to invest in this stuff. Well, so how are we doing so far? This is how we're doing this year up with all the averages, we're the thick line in there. The others are S&P 500, uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average, and then NASDAQ Composite. And we're right in there with them. Uh, we're doing great, finally. Now, I mean, it's a learning process, and I don't claim it to be anything different. 
but you know, in the in the uh, spirit of due diligence and full disclosure and everything, here's how we've done all together. Good news and bad news here. We got smacked hard by the Asian crisis. Right there. We've got what you call, in technical terms, a high beta, which means that our volatility, our, our tendency to go up or down, is greater than the general market, as you can see. So it's a roller coaster ride. I mean, the same for the fate of heart. If you're looking to retire on this money, go drop it in a 401k and go drop it into gold or whatever. No, nope, sorry, can't do it here. You gotta, you gotta be ready to surf. Space stock surfers, right? Um, the bad news is, since our inception, since our first investment actually in April of 96, you could have done better by investing in an index fund, which means just investing in a fund that invests in the companies that make up these averages. The good news is, here's zero line. The good news is we're in positive territory. We have proven, it's not just talk, we have proven that you can make money investing in space no longer just pie in the sky. You can make money doing this. We are on a long-term horizon. In fact, we are on the longest-term horizon. We're on 20, 30, 40, 50, 100-year horizon here. I'm not investing for me. I'm investing for my little five-year-old boy. He, uh, he's a space nut. He knows all his planets, too. Um, we're sinking this money in and leaving it there. In fact, Motorola, with all its problems, we're backing up the truck on them because you know, buying, you know, buy on the dips, contrarian investing, because uh, their 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 uh, fundamentals are sound and they've got, uh, well, uh, what do they call that? Going to call that celestial teledesic thing? Anyone know? Teledesic. Call it teledesic. Yeah. Okay, so they've got that, and they've got iridium, and I just read a big old article on them in Business Week. Uh, they're they're coming back from their. Uh, uh, they missed the boat on cellular uh, technology, and now they're fighting to catch up and. They're Motorola. They'll do a 15 billion cap company. They'll come back. So we're, we're uh, uh, I say backing up the truck on them. That's a term from Peter Lynch. And, and people know Peter Lynch? Oh, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, that's his term. When, when you see something good, you back up the truck and load it up. So, so, so Motorola is one we're backing up the truck on, and uh, uh, Space Development is another one. Because they just took a dip. You know, when stuff goes down, that's a buy signal. Is Jump it Boeing low. down right now? Sorry? Is it Boeing down right now? Boeing's down, but I just did an analysis of them. Their fundamentals are weak. They're still bad because the fundamentals are very commercial weak. airplane group still hasn't got their problems straight. Exactly. They, they, well, I read a, a big old article in Forbes about them. It basically comes down to this. Phil Condit, the new CEO, uh, not to mince words, doesn't know what he's doing. And they're thinking of calling back the previous CEO to clean up his mess, is what it comes down to. So until there's a fundamental change in the management structure at the top of Boeing, they're uh, stay away from them. Uh, So just to be honest, that's what we're doing. So it's a learning process. What have we learned from all this? Um, we have learned that the best thing to do is diversify, because if you put all your eggs in one basket and you drop that basket, that's the end of the story. Uh, the, Asian, the recent Asian crisis should uh, be a wake-up warning call on that uh, front. Consider online investing. We have an account through E-Trade. Who's heard of that? E-Trade, Ameritrade, all that stuff. We've got E-Trade. Works just fine. Twenty dollars uh, for uh, Nasdaq enlisted, uh, uh, fifteen dollars for uh, NYSE, and it's great. So we can we just avoid brokers all the good. Um, invest in drips, dividend reinvestment programs. Your dividends can be invested and keep working for you. You get the benefit of dollar cost averaging, which, uh, uh, in a nutshell, uh, stocks go up and down. If you drop in a lump sum and the stocks go up and down then at the end of the time you have X amount of dollars. But if you drop in a set amount as the stock goes up and down, well, if the stock ends up, which of course is why you're buying it in the first place, then you get a, a, a degree more of value from your stock than if you just drop in a lump sum at the beginning. So uh, there's books all about that. That's more than you can get into right now. And then you avoid broker fees. You know, you got the one-shot fee. And I figure, you know, uh, E-Trade, if anyone knows anything about this stuff, they're at 20 bucks right now. And then you got a Ameritrade out there for eight bucks and something. Well. That's a hyper-competitive world. E-Trade's going to have to do something about their prices eventually. But E-Trade's been there, been one of the longest companies there. So their systems are more robust. At, during the time of the uh, Asian crisis, um, uh, their service didn't go down. There was like this huge volume, and they handled it all seamlessly. So I'm happy with E-Trade. 
So, oh, and then uh, last point, you don't lose a cent to yourself. I was talking to one guy here. Oh, aren't you guys worried about space development? They just took a big old dive. No, not at all. That's the opportunity to back up the truck. You don't lose any money to yourself. Um, you, you know, when the, when the stock market dips, you haven't lost a cent. You haven't lost a thing to yourself. So you don't get yourself in that kind of mindset. So that's what we're doing. Uh, and we've got plenty more to learn and plenty more to do. And my vision, my hope and my dream and my vision that I would love to see happen, that I started this with, is uh, there's our website. I've got a website out there and I update it every month with our, uh, the, um, the state of our, uh, oh here, I got a bunch of, anyone curious, I got a business card here with the website. Take one, pass it on if you want. Um, what was that? Oh, what I'd like to do, and, and uh, the internet and cyberspace and the, the World Wide Web would help us with this. And uh, we have a gentleman here, John Costin, who's doing uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, I would like to get a network of these clubs. First, establish it locally, uh, and the best way to do that is through the principles of the National Association of Investors Corporation. I've got a link to their site from my website. Uh, they can help you. I would be more than happy to help you, you know, at no cost or anything, get your own club set up. But it's very important you get your own local club set up with your friends and people that want to do this. Get that all working, get that running, then let's get a network of meta clubs together. We can meet online and have conventions, and eventually if we get enough of these going on, then we can start exerting some clout at uh, shareholder meetings and stuff like that and really start directing these companies in the direction that we need to be going to really make space open up. So that's our mission, that's what we want to do, and we've been going strong for two and a half years, and we're in the black, and we're having fun, and we end up going down to our favorite bar afterwards and, you know, talking about the whole thing. So not only are we following our dream, but we're having fun doing it, and we're just getting started. Questions? I'll start here. Okay, you mentioned, for instance, Boeing has weak fundamentals right now, so you're not buying it. On what basis do you make that decision? You know, certainly we need to make fair decisions on how to type of companies buy it. How do you say that? Well, due to the numbers, it's, you know, high or low. The National Association of Investors Corporations puts something out called the Investor's Toolkit, and it has all these software programs that you can plug in numbers to, and you get lines and charts and stuff, and it tells you that historically it's been growing at 5%, 10%, this percent, or maybe even at a negative rate or something like that. So we look at those raw numbers, but even if you get a nice stack of numbers, still it comes down to judgment. Is this a good company? Are they doing the right things? Is management doing what they need to do? Is it going right? So, so based on those numbers and our judgment, and my reading of that Forbes article and other things, I don't have time to go into it in half an hour. Uh, I and my club, it's, a, it's we democratically decided it. Uh, it's not time to get into one. Yeah. Uh, do you have like a meeting once a month with your folks? And every Tuesday, six thirty. You can grab out to show up. We'll, uh, we'll let anybody in. Every, every, every month. Every second Tuesday of the month at 6.30. How, how do you proceed with your meetings? I mean, do you... Um, I mean, I, I'd definitely be interested in... <laughs> I'd definitely be interested in starting uh, something out. President, we, we roughly follow Robert's rules of orders and motions and this and, you know, reporting on how the old clubs did and then bring up new business and... Uh, you know, there's sundry little business. We've got a treasurer who manages the money. We've got a secretary who, who takes the minutes. And uh, then people c come forward. They have done their analyses. About half of the people have computers, and so they have this stock analysis software. And if they don't, they often come over to my house early, and we whip it out on the computer right before the meeting, and then we sit down and talk about it. So then, so then how do you go and take a vote? We, we, we vote on motion, the we second the motion, we have discussion, we take a vote. You vote on like what percentages to do and in, in which? Uh, it, it's a, the <laughs> bylaws we wrote up were taken directly out of the National Association of Investors Corporation suggestion, and they say uh, all business can pass by a majority of the percentage of the share shareholders. So, uh, and that roughly breaks down to one man, one vote, one person, one vote. And so we got to have a quorum. We say a quorum. We've got 10 members. We've got to get five members to get a quorum. Sometimes that gets to be difficult. And so I started getting on the phone and yank, yanking people over. And uh, there's one person I can always get there if I tell I got gin and tonics and limes. And she's there in a flash. <laughs> <laughs>
Yes, sir. Well, that's deciding on yes, no, we're going to buy it or not. But I think she asked percentages. How are you going to diversify? How much are you going to allocate to L'Oreal? How much are you going to allocate to Boeing? We haven't got that picky about it. Just We're, um, general diversification right now. Yeah, yeah. We just find stocks we like and we run with them. Uh, we have we don't have like an over. Well, I have a mission statement out there on the web, and you can go out there and read that. But it's it's rather general. It doesn't break. It, we don't have an asset allocation thing going on or anything like that. Uh, we just try to find stuff we like. So you make no consideration at all of the percentage for different areas. No. <coughs> All your money is pooled into one investment block. Uh, yeah. You don't. You don't. You don't take individual. It's an account on each trade. One big account on each trade, and then the drip accounts are in the name of the space stock servers. Yeah. So that so it isn't uh, each member invests his money individually. On no, we're dropping it into the pot day. and then divvying it up depending on what. What kind of a minimum? Uh, nominal. The nominal investment is twenty dollars a month. Some people put in more. Some people put in less. Some people, you know, don't show up and then don't put it in that month. But in general, you know, some people. Oh, I've been giving you money for a while. They're eight hundred dollar checks and catch up. Uh, yes, sir. Is it you just vote on like someday if you're going to cash out or people want to exit the club? Is it a vote or is there rules for that? No, you can exit at any time. It's your money. You can take off. Uh, we do uh, set up by the NAIC rules not rules, the suggestions which we took and passed into bylaws, um, we can decide how to cash them out. We can give them cash, we can assign stock to them. We actually had one gentleman, he was had, he was an ex-cop and he had poor health. He hurt his back and he thought, he said, sorry, I just can't, I would love to, but I can't. And so we cashed him out and he ended up making quite a little, he cashed well. Picked the right time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah, he was in good timing. I don't know if he uh, you know, used the magic eight ball or what, but he cashed out right here, <laughs> right after that. You know, there we went. So he good good call on his part. Yes, ma'am. NAIC has uh, very good suggestions and I don't say rules, but suggestions about how to run your club. And if you contact the NAIC, you can get. They're more than happy to have yeah. more people join, and uh, and we pay dues to them every year. They, they do a good job of it, I think. NAIC is fantastic. They are they they are so conservative. You know, you open up their stuff, you got to blow, blow dust off it and stuff. But yeah, but they have a good monthly magazine too. Yeah. Which Better investing, point. which comes out. It's really good. I think it is. Anyway. Yeah, and they're good. And Beardstown ladies, if you heard of them, they're modeled on yeah, them. Yeah, they caught lying. Sorry. Yeah, that's a big issue. We can talk about that on the side. But uh, <laughs> and nonetheless, they they did make some good money. What about the uh, taxes there? Is that a bit of a Taxes, it, well, we're organized as a general partnership. I've talked to a lot of people. In fact, I talked to another person earlier, and I talk to people all the time. Uh, a lot of people talk about space mutual funds or this or that and the other, limited partnerships. Um, a mutual fund is a big deal. You get the SEC involved, and you got these due diligences, and you got to have an on-staff CPA, and all blah, 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 blah. No thanks. We're a general partnership which means every partner materially participates. And so it's pretty simple. The treasurer fills out what's called a Form 1065, which is submitted to the IRS once a year, which says what our activities is. And then he fills out a Form uh, a Schedule K-1, which is uh, submitted as the percentage of each partner's activity in relation to that business. And then we distribute that to each partner, and that partner declares that money on their taxes on a Schedule D and uh, capital gains and losses. And uh, so we pay the taxes as the activity takes place, but you don't necessarily realize the gains as the activity takes place, which is a good and bad thing. The, bad, the downside of that is you're paying taxes on money you don't have. The upside of that is when you finally do pull out, you've been paying the taxes yearly. That's your money. You don't get double dinged. You don't get dinged on the way out again. And that's the end of the accounting as far as the IRS is concerned. How long do you hold the stock when you buy we are in the way, way, way long term. In fact, I, uh, about three months ago, I started getting antsy about Motorola. I said, guys, I don't know. And they're like, Alex, you were the one who wrote gung-ho on Iridium and stuff. Just calm down, calm down. <laughs> they, we anchor each other. You know, I always get a little antsy, and they all said, calm down. So we're in it for the long haul. Uh, we, we, um, one company, Wiley Electronics, got acquired by a German firm, so being German, they couldn't be traded on the stock exchange, so they, there's this weird cash out thing. But other than that, uh, every, we, we haven't sold a thing.
Did I hear that every year you pay for capital gains? Whether is it only on what you sold and bought, or you pay it? Yeah, you whether know? we sold or bought, made make the capital gains on that Wiley thing I just told you about. But in general, no, we probably wouldn't have too much. So if somebody pulls out and triggers capital gains, yeah, then you. Everybody has to pay it. Well, now see, that's the thing. That's what I said about you can either give them cash or stocks. If you assign the stocks to them, the stock has been sold, no capital gains. So then you don't have a tax issue then. Exactly. Is there a tax issue then? Sorry? Is there a tax issue then? Yeah, it's their issue when they sell. Should exactly. Be selling. So exactly. pulling out doesn't trigger gain for them either. No, because they've been paying all along. In fact, we had a big discussion about that. Um, he pulled out, we hadn't paid any taxes, so we're paying taxes on the stuff we sold to give to him. We're saying, well, doesn't he have to pay that? No, he gets away free and clear. Not only did he make a profit, but he didn't have to pay any taxes because he pulled out before the calendar year was over. And so that's when we figured out about this uh, cash amount by either stock or uh, uh, cash. And that's right out of the NAIC rule book. We're not like, you know, we're trying to pull something shady. Well, if you never sold any stocks, you would still have to pay some tax on the gains every year? Well, dividends. We get dividends every year. So we just do have some gains, yeah. It's like an individual investing, only you're doing it yeah. as a group? Yeah, it's 10 people as a, we're not a corporation, but we're 10 people invest, investing as one person, as general partners. So taxes aren't any worse because? No, no, it, no, not at all. Uh, this gentleman. Speaking of someone's never bought a share of stock in his life, let's assume I uh, can't find any, anybody else in my area interested, which actually isn't a bad bet. Um, is there a manual for the single, so you would suggest yeah. a single source manual for the single investor? Go, I, I want to buy one share of space tip tomorrow. The National so. Association of Investors Corporation does have a program for individual investors uh, if you just can't find anybody else in your area. And you can get in contact with them and I'll tell you all about it. I was thinking Buying shares for idiots or some such. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Or, yeah. Or they have that. What are the benefits of uh, investing as a club rather than a model where everyone gets together and says, yeah, this is a good company to buy or sell, and then everyone does it individually? It's like working out together. It's mutual support. I mean, I'm doing my own thing on the side. I got my own things going on, which, I frankly, aren't doing as well as this. So <laughs> yeah, what, what you get, you get a damper effect. You know, like I got all panicky about Motorola and they dampened that out. And another time, another guy got all panicky about something, we all dampened that out. So, you, you know, any given organization moves a little bit slower than an individual. And we yeah. see that all across business. The big old behemoths keep getting knocked off the king of the hill by the fast little upstarts. And then they become the big old behemoths. So, uh, it just helps and it makes it easier. And it's a social thing too. We have fun with it. I can't begin to tell you how much I've learned since I've been in the stock club for three years now. I, I have learned through the stock selection guides, I've learned to read value line. It, it has really opened yeah. up a lot of new, a lot of insight into my life, and I know everyone else in the club too. It's really been quite interesting. Yeah. And we come up here to some of the conferences, any IC sponsors conferences and conventions. It's a lot of fun. And my, my question, would there be benefit to, okay, as a club talking about, yeah, this, you know, so this is stock to buy and to not buy. And then would there be accounting simplifications or any simplification by, okay, yeah, I'm gonna, you know, rather than doing this as a as a group, just everyone individually has their own account. Well, they're they're all running off, they got their own 401ks and all that stuff. I mean, everyone's got their own okay. thing. You're not, you're not prohibited from doing anything else by participating in this. Well, what is the benefit of, the group investing, you know, in a common account. People, people bring information. In. Learning, and like she said, it's a learning process. You learn so much. Some of these people had no bloody idea. I mean, I, I'm not trying to. Uh, pardon my ego, but this is my baby. I drove it, and I yanked all these people in, and I'm just gung ho, and I'm on fire, and they have to throw water on me every now and then. But uh, uh, they're coming along now. They're getting into it. I've, I've lit the fire under their butts and they're starting to get really into it themselves and it's kind of well, driving itself now. It's great. If you just allow them to go up and invest on their own, they won't get the buy-in, they won't go up and do the research. And by make, having the way the investment club is set up, they're putting money in every month so that they have a 
and forces them to do the work. Well, plus which a, a group of people has a bigger pool of money with which to invest in multiple that, things. That, right, that kind of slipped my mind. That's precisely it. You're on your own, you got a thousand bucks. You get together with a bunch of people, you got 10,000 bucks. We've got $6,000 under management right now. <laughs> you know, small potatoes to, to the big industry, but we're doing it. And so the pool Who else is doing it? I've searched hard for 10 years. No one else is doing this. No one. I'm it. Are you thinking of writing a book on this, maybe? Uh, once we actually, once I start beating those averages, I'll think about it. <laughs> <laughs> the pool of money lets you buy bigger uh, chunks of stock and pay a small percentage of brokerage fees. And in more oh, different stocks. Okay, so stocks. if it's a flat fee, yeah, it's divided among the smaller money. Well, okay. that's what flat fee, well, yeah, flat fee is a different case, but if it's, if it's a percentage of the stock and you can buy 200 shares versus five shares, you're going to pay a much smaller brokerage percentage of the total amount than you would if you bought, each person bought five shares, then you each paid, the, the total paid to the broker would be a lot more if you all bought small chunks individually. Okay, that, that's a real good reason. I've been looking at doing something like this for some time now. Right. But um, we've been having difficulty getting people. Does any IC uh, offer any kind of service connecting you up with clubs existing? In the no, but I'd love to do that. I'll start a little email web ring thing, and I'd love to start linking people up together. Uh, Bruce McKenzie out in uh, Boston is really gung-ho on this. Pam Hoffman sitting right back there is pretty gung-ho on all this stuff. They're out there and they're communicating with me individually, and I'd love to get y'all together and get this thing going. But uh, you know, th that, that's, the, that's one of the downsides of the whole space movement in general, is we're very dedicated, but very dispersed. You know, and we get this concentration here once a year, or in Midwest, or wherever it else is, but then we disperse out, and it's us as lone voices in the wilderness again. You know? I'm not even necessarily talking about a space-related investment fund. I'm talking about does any IC give you any hints as to what clubs are operating in your area of any kind? Well, yeah, the, uh, the uh, Better Investing magazine lists the clubs right in the back of the issue. Every two months, is it, or something like that? No, that's, that's Ad Astra. Every month, they list the clubs right in the back, so yeah. And uh, it's gone so far that just regular clubs that are just out there making money, for example, in Western Michigan, there is a club that's been in existence and they're offering seminars and charging like a nominal three bucks on how to form a club, what are good investments, how to do the analysis, this, that, and the other. And I didn't, haven't really looked at all the states, but I'm sure that's going on in every state. Are you adverse to having people here doing your club? Yes, I am. I would rather you pull people together in your locality. Bruce McKenzie, bless his soul, like him. He's a great guy. He applied to our club. I said, Bruce, pull together some guys. He, he is a, well, he's a regional coordinator of NSS, and he's very active in the Boston chapter. I said, get them going, and let's link up in a meta club. But if he joined my club, that's the end of his initiative right there. He'd just ride our coattails. And I'm saying that to the rest of you, not to be nasty, but I want to get this modular, I don't want to be the king of anything. I'd love to get a little bunch of fiefdoms together that have a, a, a grand council once a year as a, as a track of uh, an ISDC or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I'm running out of time here. We probably want this room for something else. Uh, maybe one or two more questions, if there are any more. Okay, well, thanks for coming. I'm signing books over there.